All right, ready? Huh. Open, close. Huh. Oh my gosh. Huh. This is the best feeling as a developer. I know this is like super basic, but when you like code something, especially something you're not super familiar with and you get it to actually do what you want, it feels pretty good. Hey everyone, welcome to part two of building an accordion block. In the last video, we built the UI out using HTML and CSS. In this video, as you might have guessed, we'll be building the functionality using JavaScript. But before we start, I wanted to thank our sponsor for this video, Kite. Kite is a machine learning powered free code completion tool that integrates with your favorite code editor like VS Code. As you keep using it, Kite will learn your coding patterns and it'll rank your completion options based on relevance. This means that the things you write most often will be at the top of the list, saving you precious moments. I've been using the Kite integration in VS Code for several months, and it's definitely made my coding speed faster. It is free, so I recommend that you try it out for yourself and see if you like it. The link to Kite is down below in the description. All right, let's build this accordion, shall we? All right, so let's get started with the JavaScript logic for um, our accordion block. So going back to our little functionality notes that we made last time, we are going to do the accordion function via these three CSS classes that we'll be adding and removing to the different accordion elements. The accordion content is what's going to be hidden or shown. So when it has the collapse class, which is the default closed class, it'll be set to display none. Then between opening and closing, we'll have the collapsing class. And when we're opening it, we're going to set the height of the content to whatever it is via JavaScript. So, you know, the content could be different heights depending on how much text there is. And by default, it'll have a height set to zero. And there will be a transition on the height property to get that animation effect. Then when the accordion content for that item is shown and it is open, it'll have collapse show. So that's, that's the plan. We'll see if uh, it ends up being exactly like this or not but let's get into our code. I think I'm gonna to have to hard code the collapse class on the accordion collapse item. Let me just kind of double check. Go back to the bootstrap example that we were looking at. Collapse, okay. Let's go in the inspector and check that out. So here's the accordion item for the first item. Let me do close. So for close, the button will have the collapse class added for the arrow styles. And also the accordion collapse item will have the collapsing, collapse, and then collapse show. So that'll be on the accordion collapse, which, which contains the actual content in the accordion. I'm sure I'll have to refer back to that a couple times. But I'm just going to add the classes to the first accordion item and then get it working. And then once things are working, then we will add it to the other items down there. So according collapse, and by default, it'll have the collapse class. And let's go into our styles and add these classes. So according content, and then this is where desktop styles start. I'm just gonna add a little co comment here. Desktop styles. Okay, so accordion content. Then we're going to be adding these classes accordion collapse and I think it was we're gonna try to do display none I believe for accordion collapse oh actually accordion collapse collapse right okay this is all just uh, you know trial and error okay so now you can see that the accordion I guess we'll just do mobile for now since it's going to have the same the same logic. Okay, so right now according collapse is display none. See what happens if we get rid of that class. So now it's showing. So that looks pretty good. And we need to make sure this is only bold when it's actually open. So let me see if that's because... Oh, I already sort of added the open class to that. So let's remove that because we'll add it in with uh, JavaScript later. So according to question, we'll add the class of open when it's open. And I'm gonna add that to the notes actually. This is bold. Accordion, it was accordion question. Add class open when button is clicked to open. 
can move on close. And I guess we'll maybe make this to accordion collapse item. Okay, so first we'll do the accordion closed. So collapse is display none. Bootstrap was doing it where it's display none using the not selector if it doesn't have the show class. I'm going to try to do sort of the opposite where I'll say collapse show and then I'll add the styles there maybe. I'm not really sure. I guess the reason for doing it on the using the not selector is because it'll be display blocked by default if it's not display none. But I'm going to try to do display none for collapse and then display block on collapse show. So let me just add that in there too. Display block. So this is a little different than what Bootstrap has, but you know, it's got to put your own spin on things. This is kind of how I approach things when I have to build things for work. Even if I feel like I'm pretty familiar with what I have to make, unless it's like super second nature, I usually try to either draw like a wireframe for how it's supposed to look for styles and also make these functionality notes for how it's supposed to behave when you, you know, click on different things. And it's just really helpful to keep things straight when you're coding, because if I just kind of dove into the code and started trying to write code, you'll forget things or maybe you'll go down in a slightly different direction than what you want to. Keeping these notes is just an easy way to keep track of everything that you have to do and to make sure that you have everything done when you're finished building it. So let's get back to the, so according collapse, collapse. And then the next thing we want to do is accordion, collapse, uh, collapsing, and then I want accordion, collapse, open. Then we also want to add some styles for the accordion question. I'm going to put that before accordion collapse since the header comes before the content. So accordion, question, open. Maybe I'll put accordion content under the accordion question. So accordion question open, and then this will control the um, the toggle, and I think also the styles. So let's add that to this first one here. This accordion question open. This accordion question open. I want it to be font weight bold, and the accordion question open the pseudo element. After, we want it to be flipped, right? And let's let me check the direction. Okay, so when it's closed, it's pointing down. So this is suggesting that there's more content below it. Then when it's open, it's going to be pointing up. So let's copy that. Okay, looks like I might need to fix the uh, focus on that. Yeah. Um, so I think for recording question to fix the focus. Because usually for a button, it'll like have different styles. I think it might actually need outline. I think I heard that you don't want to turn off outline because that's important for like accessibility purposes. So what if I just set the outline color to white? Let's test it and set it to red. Looks like it's not really. Let's try border. I think border you can set to none. Okay, looks like that's working. So according to question, we'll set the border to none. Okay, so let's go back to, let's get this toggle thing. So according to question open, the after pseudo element, we probably want to rotate it. So what I'm going to do is say transform, rotate. And, oops, what's going on here? Rotate. 180 degrees. So you can see it's flipping. And we can, of course, add a transition on transform, 300 milliseconds, ease in out. Those are kind of my default transform transition. So it kind of rotates like that. I'm not sure what Bootstrap does. Oh, they do the same thing. Oh, shoot. How do I... <laughs> OK, 
Okay, well, you know what? It's fine. We'll figure it out. Okay, so let's add this to the according question open after. So copy those styles. According question open after. I guess we'll do this and then font weight bold, which is 700. I tend to just use the numbers for font weights. Okay, so let's make sure that the according question styles are correct. How do I? It's like sometimes I can get the outline to show up and sometimes I can't. I'm not really sure why. Oh, why is the open class not there? I think it's because I added it in here. So, open. Okay. Maybe I will do a focus pseudo selector. Um, accordion. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this up to the top. Accordion question uh, focus. Let's try outline color red. I just want to see if I can make it happen. Reload this. Okay, well, we'll just leave it that there. See, <laughs> see if it appears again. Um, okay, that's fine. Okay. Did I do it? I think I didn't add the transition to that after element. The pseudo element, I mean. Yeah, so transition, transform, 300 milliseconds, ease in, out. So we're going to manually add the open class. There we go. If we want, we can um, do some JavaScript in the console. So what I'm going to do is add, I'm going to reload this. I'm going to say document, let's do it up here. So document query selector all. And the selector is accordion question. And I want to select the first one. So it'll be square brackets zero because zero is the first number when you're counting in code. Query selector all, so get that. And then add, oh, class list, I believe. Add open. So let's see if that works. Oh, I think, is there a toggle? Can I do toggle? Yes. Okay. So we can see here, as I keep running this, it will add the open class and remove it. And then the styles change and it looks pretty good. So we'll be using this when we're doing the JavaScript stuff. So the button is taken care of. Now let's do the, let's do the classes for the content itself. I want to add the collapsing class to this collapsing. And I want to add a height for the accordion collapse item. Let's first add some padding to the accordion content. So it'll be the correct, you know, it'll have the, the padding and the spacing. So we'll say padding. We'll just go one rem all the way around. That looks okay. Let's see what the design looks like. Okay. So it looks like there is padding on the top and bottom, but not on the sides. So this looks close to the design already. I think the space was added in margin. So maybe we don't need the padding actually, just because of the, the design. I already added space in the margins. Okay. Oh, there it is again. See, it's weird how I can't like... So strange. There we go. It's like sometimes it'll, the outline will appear and sometimes it won't. Okay, let's let's fix this. This is bugging me a little bit too much. So the cool thing is in the inspector, we can uh, select some different pseudo selectors. Okay, let's, let's focus on the focus on the focus visible pseudo selector. Outline. What if I can let's see if this will show up outline red border. 
one pixel solid red. So maybe it was border bottom. Oh yeah, so it's a border. So I want the border to be none on the focus visible pseudo selector of the button. So maybe we'll do, let's do this where we'll go accordion question. Accordion question focus visible order none. Oops. Order none. Okay. Oh shoot. Maybe important. Nope. Maybe it's not the border. Maybe it is the outline. Outline none. Okay. So outline... I really don't get what's going on here right now. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to Google really quick. CSS outline accessibility. Let's see. This is a good site, by the way. Okay, so they're saying don't remove it. Yeah, developers are frequently asked to remove the focus outline by others who believe it to be unintentional or unsightly. This is true. I have done that. <laughs> so they're saying an alternative would be to at least make the colors more in line with what's on your website styles. I probably only want it to be on the focus visible. So let's do border none for the question. And then what do I even set? CSS outline property. Okay, let's check out Mozilla Developer Network. All right. Outline solid, dashed red, one rim solid. So maybe I'll just do solid and then a color for the focus. So outline, solid, and then I guess I can do one of the colors that I set, right? Um, what were they again? Let's do... Maybe a gray. That seems relatively okay. Oh, oops. Okay, let's do it here. And we'll add this thing here. There we go. That is a bit thick. <laughs> I guess I can do one pixel. Okay, that seems good. Let's change it to solid one pixel. Okay, I think that's reasonably accessible, right? Now where were we? Honestly, it is, it is slightly unsightly. I hate to say it. Maybe I will just do... Let's see if this works. RGBA. I'm not even sure this is going to work. Set the opacity. Let's try 0 0.5. I'm not sure if that worked. Okay, that works. I wonder if this just doesn't like text dark blue. I think maybe it just doesn't work for... Uh... I think you can't put a variable inside an RGBA thing. Let's just do this. Sorry, this is taking... I'm spending a little... probably too much time on this. And I should be spending it on the accordion. I feel like the uh, live thing isn't working. Let's try again. Sometimes it's like needs to get reset or something. I mean, that looks okay. Okay, I'm just gonna see if it's okay to set it to white. Outline to white. Weet white. Go 
go to accessibility. Okay, assigning outline value of zero or none will remove the default focus style. If it can be interacted with, it should have a must have a visible focus indicator. Provide obvious focusing styling if the default focus style is removed. I feel like this is something that like the vast majority of websites don't even do, which is not good. Let's see. Let's see what Tailwind does. That's kind of cool. It's like a dash dotted thing. Maybe I can do that and then add a little padding or something to it. Yeah, let's let's do that. So we'll say padding 0.2 rems. Maybe just on the top and bottom. It actually looks okay. I think I'm gonna make I think the padding has to be all around, otherwise it looks a bit strange. Okay. So according question, we'll add padding to the question. Uh here we go. Zero what was it? Zero point two rems. And the outline will do dash one pixel. Okie dokie. You know what? I can live with that. Okay, now where were we? <laughs> Alright, so for the content, we want to add the collapsing. Actually, let's start with the collapse open. Okay, so collapse open, um, display block. Cool. That'll be the first thing to do. Collapse open, display block. So now, we haven't done collapsing yet, but let's add the JavaScript so that when you click on the thing, it'll load the classes. Okay, so what needs to have the click event added to it? I'm assuming it's going to be this button, right? What we want to happen is when you click on an accordion question button, it will add the open class to the accordion question that you clicked, and it will add the um, collapse open, the open class, to the accordion collapse that is in the same accordion item. I wonder if, I'm just curious, it would be a little bit of a pain to get from accordion question to the accordion collapse that's like next to it. I wonder if they use IDs and bootstrap to sort of help, help with that. Okay, oh, looks like they might. There's an idea of collapse one. Um, and collapse too. Okay, so they are adding some classes to these things. Heading one. So the button itself does not have any IDs. So I think when you click on the button, it'll, I guess, go up to the parent and then the sibling to get the collapse one next to it. Let me look that up. I've done this with jQuery for work, but I haven't done it with vanilla JavaScript. Um, so JavaScript parent selector and sibling selector is what we need to look up. All right, so this is made in 2017. I've heard of this website, so I think it's I think it's considered pretty good. Oh, climb up DOM and find a closest element with a matching selector. That sounds also good. Oh, this is a long. This is why jQuery is sometimes nice because there's like a parent function that you can use in jQuery and like a next selector. Makes things a bit easier. Okay, this is a little bit difficult. Oh, there's an update version. Ooh, there's a closest element property. Oh, it's poorly supported. That sucks. Okay. It's actually supported by everything except IE, so I think it's okay. Okay, so let's look at this. Get the closest parent element with a matching selector using vanilla JavaScript. Oh, <laughs> they're using this for the accordion too. This is pretty funny actually. Okay, so accordion toggle. So instead of the button, they're using an A link. So when someone clicks the accordion toggle link, I want to get the accordion element. Yes, that's also what I want. So they're getting a loop. 
Hmm, I wonder if there's a better way of doing this, honestly. I mean, I could of course copy what this person wrote, but... Oh, okay, this is terrible, but what if I got rid of the H2, because... Honestly, I don't know when I would actually do that, and just had the button, and then the button would be a direct sibling to the accordion collapse thing. So that might be a little bit easier. Let's just see if a JavaScript sibling selector is any easier. We'll just try this one. Current, no oh, is it that easy? Current node next element sibling. Okay, I guess we will try that. So what I want to happen is, and we're just gonna try this for the first accordion item. All right, let me see if I mess up my styles at all. I feel like it might be okay. Yep, it is okay. Okay. So what I want to happen is when I click on an accordion question, I want it to one, add the open class to the accordion question, two, add the collapsing and then collapse open class to the next selector, the next element accordion collapse. Okay. Let, hmm, I feel like naming things is the hardest thing. So let's call this let accordion button equal document document query selector accordion question hmm hold on because I'm gonna need to add a click event to every thing I might need to make a loop and then add the click event to each accordion. You're going to find out very quickly in this video how <clears throat> terrible I am at JavaScript. JavaScript add event listener to multiple elements of the same class. Oh, look at this. It's Flavio Copes. How to add an event listener to multiple elements in JavaScript. Say you want to add an event listener to multiple elements in JavaScript. Yes, I want to do that. How do I do that? Yes, yeah, so you can add an event listener to a single element with this add event listener. How can you add the same event to multiple elements? Use a loop. Okay, that seems relatively easy. Thank you, Flavio. Okay, so document query selector all. And we're using this. We'll just add a little console log to make sure it's working. Click. All right, let's see if this is working. Uh, console. Okay, cool. So what's happening is document query selector all. So it's selecting all. So what's happening is the it's getting query selector all to select all elements that have the accordion underscore underscore question class. Then it's looping through each of those items. And for each item in the loop, it will add the event listener for a click. And when you click on each of those, it'll console log click. Okay, so the click event is working. So maybe first thing is we will add the class to the thing. So I guess item is the item. Uh, class list, let me think about this. I guess I'll just toggle, right? toggle um, open. Let's see if we can use this for both the opening and closing logic. Okay, so let's go to the console. All right, let's check this and make sure. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. This is great. So I'm also going to toggle the sibling selector, right? So let's go back to where we we're looking here. Okay, so document query selector, it's so the element dot next element sibling. So for the item, which is the button, next element sibling, class list, toggle, um, I guess also open, right? So we'll, we'll, f we'll do the collapsing animation stuff after we get the main opening and closing logic working. All right, ready? Ooh. Oh my gosh, check that out. Okay, wait, why is this showing? Oh, it needs the collapse class added. Um, 
here we go. I have the collapse class to all of them. Okay. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. And you know... Oh, I think I didn't... I didn't work on this one. Ooh, it's only adding it to the first one. Maybe there's an issue in the loop or something. So it's adding the open class to the question, but it's not adding it... Oh, it's because I took the button out of that H2, so let's let's do that stuff too. Alright, so this is the first one. Get rid of the H2. I do a lot of CSS stuff, but it is fun to do JavaScript stuff because, you know, you work with the logic and you kind of make things dynamic and stuff. Okay. Look at that. And you know what? If I was really lazy or super tight for time and yet I didn't care about the animation, this would be basically good enough. Uh, for the accordion. But we want to do the collapse sing class. So let's go back into here. What we want to happen is when you click on it, add collapsing class to accordion collapse, which is the sibling. Then for a certain amount of time, then remove collapsing class and add open, open class. Oh, but we need to, we'll need to add some logic for if the open class does not exist, meaning if it's closed, add collapsing and then add the open class to the thing. If it does have the open class, which means it's open, then we want to remove the open class from the accordion collapse and then add the collapsing class and then remove the collapsing class. So this might be slightly tricky. Let's just look at the bootstrap example once again just to see what the order is here. So let's click on this a couple times, see what the order is for the classes. Actually let's reload first to kind of reset it. Oh, I think it was default open. Okay, so it's closed. It's closed. According collapse has the collapse class collapsing and then collapse shows added. So it removes the collapse class, replaces it with collapsing, then it removes collapsing and replaces it with collapse show. So collapse, collapsing, collapse show. Okay. And then when it's showing collapse show, it does the reverse, collapsing and then collapse. So I think I'll have to add a condition for each of the things. So if, if it has class open, we want to add the collapsing class. Then we want to remove collapse and collapse, add collapsing class to accordion collapse, which is a sibling. Then, after X amount of time, remove collapse sing class and add open and add collapse open class. Then, if it doesn't have class open, if it doesn't have class open, we will assume that it is that the accordion collapse element will have the collapse open class set on it. So we'll want to remove collapse open from accordion collapse, add collapsing. Then after X amount of time, remove collapsing class and add collapse class. I'm trying to think if I could do this with the toggle. Oh yeah, we'll also have to add the height in with uh, JavaScript, but let's just get the classes working. Can I toggle? Use a toggle? I think I'm going to have to probably do like a set timeout thing to add that delay in. So I can, this, the toggle works for the accordion question. 
I guess no matter what, the first step is to add the collapsing class to the accordion collapse, right? But then it'll the difference is if we want to end on collapse or collapse open. I feel like that might be the thing that will sort of trick us up. So we're just going to be really simple and just add this condition. So I want to check if the accordion question has an open class before we toggle it. Otherwise, things will be reversed. So let's move this down. Kind of like we'll do this stuff here. Okay, so if um, item class list contains, oh, that's nice. Um, if item class list contains open, then we'll do this stuff here. Oops. If it has class open, so we did that, remove collapse um, from the sibling. So item next element sibling class list i guess we just set the class list to i can't remember if you set the class list um so usually i'm just adding or removing classes <laughs> set class list so there's remove and add of course um can you just okay let's just try this ourselves Document, query, selector, accordion collapse. Let's do it for the first one. Zero. Um, class list. Let's see if we can set it. Accordion. Let's just set it to test. Classes is not a function. Uh, equals test. I think it worked. Okay, yeah. So let's try that with the... Reload that. So I want it to be set to accordion, collapse, collapsing. Let's see if that worked. Oh, it did work. Okay, cool. So class list can be set. Equals accordion collapse collapsing okay then after x amount of time oops class list then after x amount of time remove collapsing class and add collapse open class so i guess just set timeout set timeout function i think i'm using an old let's see what the es6 This is interesting. Okay, I think I can just do... So you don't have to type function, you just do the parentheses and the arrow. Parentheses and arrow. That's cool. Um, so item next element sibling class list equals according collapse um, open. Oh wait, if it contains open, so actually this is if it is open and we want to close it. So I'm just going to add an exclamation point to be the opposite. So if it doesn't open, if it doesn't contain the class open, so open accordion item, and then else will be close accordion item. I guess we just add this stuff in there. Okay. So, okay, so set timeout, and then how long do we want to wait? Let's just say maybe 300 milliseconds, since that's what we set the arrow toggle thing to flip. Okay, so I think we can at least try testing the opening logic. And I also, when I'm testing, I use console log quite extensively. <laughs> open accordion, open accordion content. We'll just say maybe toggle accordion button. Okay, so let's see if that works. Okay, go here. Okay, so some stuff happened, and some stuff didn't happen. It says items is not defined. Oh, I think it just needs to be item. There we go. Okay, let's try again. Let's reload just for good measure. 
and click. Oh my gosh. It worked. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Hey, I feel pretty good. This is the best feeling as a developer. I know this is like super basic, but when you like code something, especially something you're not super familiar with and you get it to actually do what you want, it feels pretty good. Okay, so now I'm just gonna remove the comments because we don't really need that. I'll leave the console log messages in there. Let us do the opposite. So the close logic. Oh, did I even add the, um... okay, so I'm, I'm doing a toggle thing no matter what. We should probably delete that. Okay, actually, I should probably recheck if it works. Um, yeah, so we'll toggle the button after the whole logic for the content. Well, let's see if it still works. Okay, it still works. Yes, I'm not a fraud. Now, the else, so if it is open and we want to close it, we're going to go... So let's remove that. So remove collapse open from accordion collapse. Actually, it should be toggle the collapsing, but whatever. Let's just, I'm assuming this is going to work and we can add in the console log messages if we need to. So we want to, yeah, so we'll, this is the same as above. And then the next thing will be the whole set timeout thing. So we'll copy that. And then set timeout, close accordion content. And then we want it to set to accordion collapse. All right. Load for good measure. Ready? One, two, three. It opens. Let's see if it closes. Ready? Oh. oh let's see what happened here. It's accordion. So it's actually adding and removing the classes as it should. However, this is. Oh, it needs the collapse class. I kind of forgot about that. There we go. Okay. Now it should work. Ready? Open. Oh no. Let's reload. Open. Oh, oh, hey, it sort of worked. I think I do need to, um, I need to set like the heights and stuff. Yay like on the bootstrap thing. So the collapsing has, when it's opening, you set it to the height of the content. And then I think I didn't add the, uh, some of those styles, remember from our notes. Yeah, height zero, overflow, hidden transition, yada yada. I forgot to add that if I'm not yeah there we go and I'm just gonna do 300 milliseconds which is the same thing as 0 0.3 seconds but I just like using milliseconds for some reason okay so let's test it out again reload so you can see it has a little bit of a delay because when it's opening, when it has that collapsing class, it's supposed to have a height set. When you're opening it, it's supposed to use JavaScript to sort of manually set the height of the accordion um, collapse. So let's try that by doing stuff in the browser. I'm going to say accordion collapse, collapsing. Okay, so right now, height is set to zero. So somehow we need to get the height of what it would be if the height was not zero. So right now it's like this, and the height is 32.8 pixels. So I don't know if there's a way, I'm just kind of curious here. Um, let's do some experimenting. Document query selector, um, accordion, collapse, er, height, inner, okay, 
Yeah, I know. I'm too used to jQuery. Uh, JavaScript get height of element. Client width and client height. Okay. Okay, so client width and client height. Get height. All right, let's... Okay, stack overflow. Okay, it looks like client height does seem to be the agreed upon thing. So... Get client height. <laughs> did I even do that right? I think I did not. This is just client height. Ooh, this is what I don't know how they did that. So I wonder how they would have done that. Okay, let's make the transition slow again. Yeah, so height set to 176. Oh, I wonder if they set it before they do the collapsing thing. Yeah, I wonder if that's it. So let's just try to get the height of this. So collapse one ID. Document query selector. Collapse one. Client height. Ah, still zero. If we set it to not be display none. So we need to get the height. The problem here is we need to get the height of an element that is display none. I don't even know if that's possible. JavaScript get height of display none element. Element. Oh, it's setting to hidden. So I guess you can get the height when it is hidden versus display none. I'm just kind of curious. Hidden? Oh no. Display. <laughs> it's a visibility hidden. Guys, I promise I can code. Yeah, that's not going to cut it. This is quite a mystery. You need to make the elements parent visible for that one short moment while you're getting the elements dimensions. Okay, if I set this to... What if we remove the display none, but we do... Overflow hidden. Or what if it's visibility hidden and overflow hidden? The problem with visibility hidden is that it still takes up space. Ah, this is a little bit annoying. Okay, let's see if we can figure out how Bootstrap did it. transition very slow. Let's say 10 seconds. So the height was set to 176, which we knew. So it is display none now. If we remove the display none, it's it will show obviously. But what is the display set to when it is? Um, maybe this is why they're using that not selector instead of the show class. Display none, and while it's collapsing, what's the display set to? And it looks like I don't know. What some of the stack overflow answers seem to be saying was that you need like a millisecond of where the height is not set to zero. Get the height from there. But I feel like if that happened, you would sort of like see it. 
I guess Boothtrap is smarter than I am. I may need to look at the almighty Google for this. How do you find the dimensions of a display none element? Oh, window computed style. That's interesting. This is very computed. This is very interesting. Let's give it a shot. Reload. So what I'm trying to do is get computed style. We don't get computed style of this thing. Document query selector. Um, accordion collapse. This will automatically get the first thing. <laughs> Hide it set to auto. Yeah, it's saying you can turn on the display, get dimensions, and set it back to hidden. It won't cause any visual differences, really. Some hidden div de style display block. Oh, interesting. Okay, I guess let's just try that. Did I even do that right? No, oh, style display equals. Okay. Okay, what I want to do is set it to block, then set it to none. Oh, I didn't see a flash or anything. This is very interesting. Collapse. Oh, let's do console log to return the height. According collapse, client height. All right, let's see what happens. Oops, no. <laughs> uh, that's too fast for my own good. So console log dot client height. And let's run it. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, didn't flash. That must be what Bootstrap's doing. All right, thanks, Stack Overflow. Okay, so for the opening, this is where we want to set the height, right? Item next element sibling. This is so crazy. Style. Oops. Style display equals block. What if I should create a variable for this? Yeah, why not? Let accordion collapse equals this. And I'll just replace it. I know I could have done a find and replace, but let's actually make sure this works. I'm just going to comment that out for now. just want to make sure everything works. Okay. I think I need to do this here. Okay. A reload. Okay. Uh, looks good. Now, where were we? Okay. So we're getting the height. So we're setting the accordion collapsing to display block. Then we're going to say, let, we'll just say accordion height equals accordion collapse client height. And I believe that's just a number. Then we're going to say accordion collapse style height equals ack height. Then we will set accordion collapse style display equals none. <sighs> Boy, this is uh, lots of thinking involved here. So let's just see if it will set the height correctly. All right, and what we're looking at is this accordion collapse, then we want 
to see the height get set via JavaScript. So let's click on this. Oop. Height was set to zero. Hmm. Oh, I think I need to do this before adding the collapsing thing. Okay, let's try again. Let's also add a little console log message. Um, accordion height. Okay, ready? Okay, so it was set there. Um, and then we need to remove the height that we set. Hmm, did that even get set? Okay, so this should get the height set. It's not setting the height. Yeah, it's saying the height is 17. Um, let's comment this stuff out. Okay, let's try again. So according collapse, which is the sibling. Okay. The style was set to display none. I think I'm missing something here. Let's comment this. Well, it's funny that it was the height was getting set earlier. Okay, I don't know if this is at all the reason why, but instead of the variable, let's just try this. And let's also hard code this. Let's just set it to 100 for the heck of it. And then let's also con comment out the display none part. Okay, click it. Okay, so it is not working. It's not setting the height. Which is weird, because it is doing the block. It is setting display block. So something is not working with the setting the height explicitly. Let's just make sure we have our syntax correct. Um, Interesting. So, according collapse. Oh wait, I think I just did. Maybe I'll, I need to set the client height using the client height thing. Um, yeah, I think maybe it's just a syntax issue. Client height. Nope. This is a little bit annoying. Yeah, element style height is what should be working. Oh, equals this plus px. Oh, right, because I'm setting it in the style, the inline styles. Okie dokie. So I think this actually needs to be a string, 100px. Oh, style height. Style dot height. Did that work? Oh, yes, it worked. Yay. Oh boy, syntax. Okay, let's just do hard coded 100 px right now. Now, reload. Okay, thank goodness. So now instead of 100 px, we're going to do ack height plus. Reload again. There we go. Woo! So then we'll do display none. Then we'll add the collapsing class. Then I guess we'll uncomment this stuff too. Okay. Ready? Okay, so it's setting the height. Maybe I don't need to actually do display none. Yeah. Because it's already set in the CSS. So I'll just do display blank. And hopefully it'll just inherit the default styles. Okay. 
Oh my gosh, look at that. It's actually working! Okay, there's a problem here because... Yeah, I think I need to get the height plus the margin bottom. What if it was padding bottom? Yeah, now the height will be more. So if I'm using a margin to add space between the item, the line, it's not going to get included in client height. But if I do padding, it will be included. So let's change the styles for that. Let's see, what was that again? Uh, it's in the accordion content. So go back to our styles, look for accordion content. And instead of margin bottom, we'll do padding bottom. Okay, let's try again. All right, so it's opening and closing, and the height is set. So now we need to do the animation thingy. I think I also need to cancel the height when you... The height needs to get canceled when it gets collapsed open. So let's do that, because I don't need it anymore. Collapse open, and then we will... Oh, actually, let's use the variable for the sibling selector. And let's just make sure that's working still. Uh oh. Did not have the height. Oh, sorry. ACC collapse, not ACC height. Let's try again. There we go. Okay, good. So now in the open thing equals string, empty string, and that should cancel it out. Or it'll just, it'll remove it from the inline styles at least. Okay, good. All right, not bad. So the next thing is we need to get the animation working. I think like transition should not be set on collapse sing, but on the cording collapse itself, but let's try that. think, right? Hmm. Because the height was set on according collapse. Oh, I think I need to add... Right now it's set according collapse underscore underscore collapse open, but I think it needs to be according underscore underscore collapse collapse open. Let's double check that. Oh, I forgot I did that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Just add that. I don't know if that's gonna make a huge difference right now. There we go. So I think I might need to add the inline height to see, let me see if, I think it needs to be added like a little bit after the class has changed to collapsing so the transition takes effect. Height zero. Okay, let's just do it for this. Collapse, oops, collapsing. So now the height is zero. So let's set the height to whatever it was, 35 pixels. Okay, so now, yeah. So the problem was I was setting the inline styles height at the same time that I was adding the collapsing class, which means the height is zero here. So it's kind of getting set to 35 pixels or whatever at the same time. So the transition wouldn't happen. So I think if I add a delay to adding the inline styles height, then the transition will take effect. So let's try that. So here we go. It's here. So let's add a Another set timeout, the arrow thingy, then we'll set a delay of like, let's just try one. <laughs> I think actually I want to cancel out the I'm setting display block, getting the height, setting the height, change it to hidden. Hopefully this won't mess up and cause a flash of something. 
Yeah, let's try that. All right, no idea if this is gonna work. Oh my gosh. It worked on the opening. Yeah, okay, cool. So now we need to do the animation to close. So why is that not working? So when you click to close, it is adding the collapsing class, which is good. But when it's closing, for some reason, let's try this. Hmm. I guess because the height auto will not transition to height zero, right? That's interesting. Let's see what Bootstrap did. Okay, so height was set to open. Let's do computed styles height. That's interesting. Um, let's make the transition slower again. Alright, let's check on the monitor the height. It is 176. I don't think it's going to be set from CSS or anything. Yeah, it's not. So this is just what the natural height is. So you can see it was decreasing. Hmm. Collapsing. Height is set to zero. So that's why it is transitioning, I think. Let's try that manually. I'm going to set it to collapsing. And get rid of the height zero. See, now it's not um, transitioning. This is very confusing. But it didn't seem like it was setting the height statically. Hmm. But I wonder if I... wonder if the transition will work if I do the set the height to, you know, the original natural height and then set it to zero. Oh wait, it's because I had to do that very slight thing there. So we have to do a similar thing here. So when it's open, let's not remove the height because maybe that's needed. I'm not really sure. Okay. This is working. So this is not working. I'm guessing it's because of this. So what I need to do is right now I'm I'm leaving the height statically set to 33 pixels. What happens if I go height zero? Okay, so that seems like it is working. So I will remove this. I'm going to add the collapsing class. And then maybe try another set timeout. Delay of one millisecond. And set the height to the original act height thing. Yeah, I have no idea if this is going to work, but we will see. No, wait a minute. And in the collapsing class. So the transition works, then set it to zero. I think we want to set it to zero pixels. Ugh. Let's see if this works. Okay, so that works obviously. Ooh! Okay, it worked the first time. So let's see what's going on. Okay, it works when you open. Then when we click to close, setting the height to zero and it closed and that seemed to work, right? Let's check one more time. Open, close. So the open and close animation looks good. I think I just need to cancel out this height of zero now. Yeah, because that's going to mess that up. So basically, after all the classes have been updated, style height equals cancel. Oh my gosh. Okay, ready? Open. Close. Open. 
Close! Open. Close! Oh my gosh, this makes me so happy. Okay, this is good. So it works. I, I like, I personally like having accordions, like, giving you the control over what's open and what's closed. I know that there's sometimes that they will do like a, if you open one accordion, it'll automatically close all the other ones, which is like fine, I guess, but I don't know. I like giving users as much control as possible. See how it looks on desktop. Reload for good measure. Uh oh. Okay, I don't know what just happened, but we'll just pretend that didn't happen, that everything is getting animated perfectly. Oh, weird. It's like sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. Oh, you know what I bet it is? If I'm doing it, clicking it to. Yeah, kind of messes it up. If I wait until. So it's because the, the animation takes 300 milliseconds, so if I click before the animation completes, it will kind of get messed up, as you can see here. Yeah, it'll be kind of messed up. So I think, what can I do to fix this? So while it's animated, it has a collapsing class. So I think maybe I can add the click event to things that don't have a collapsing class. Let's see. Item add event listener. Okay, so I always make one big condition if it doesn't if the item does not contain the class collapsing. Let's see what happens. Class list contains collapsing. Then everything will be put in there. Let's make sure our indenting is correct. That seems right. Save. Prettier is pretty awesome. I actually didn't start using Prettier till pretty recently. <laughs> okay, let's see if this works. Okay, giving it enough time. Now it's closing. Now let's click very quickly. Eh, it's not great, but. I'm not going to split hairs here. Okay, let's do one more check. Looks pretty good. It is a little bit annoying that the image just kind of jumps down like that. Eh. I guess I could statically fix the image or whatever. But honestly, I think this is okay. Check one more time on mobile. Nice. Okay. You know what? I think that's good enough. And that's part two of building an accordion. If you want to see me build an entire website with HTML, SCSS, and JavaScript, check out my seven part series, Build a Responsive Website from Scratch. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.